I'm with you. In a minute. Check, check. I think I'm in the booth. Okay. Alright, we'll see. You guys out there in the chat, please give us a little feedback. You guys can hear us pretty good. Yeah, give us a level check. I can hear pretty good myself, but we'll have to see. In the next match that he was in, ran 149 balls to take the lead in our high run pool. So, with no further ado, let's announce our two players. The first player is sponsored by Booyah Sports, Justice Cases, and Bear Cues. All right. The Derby City 2013 Banks Champion. Just give me a check back for the Derby noise, sound. You guys can hear us in the chat pretty good. Master of the Table. 2010. Oh. Hang on a sec. I almost got the wrong thing here. All right. You know, uh, yes, we can hear you. All right, good. All right, yeah, video looks like it's frozen a bit. He is one step away from getting to the finals again. Okay, the camera there. Can we put our hands together? One camera's frozen. Go. It's a race show All right. So we're just going over the announcements. We're going to get this race underway any second now. 2013 World Games Champion. He has back-to-back -back U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships in 2010 and 2011. He's sponsored by Predator Cues and C Systems. Last year in this event, he finished third. Looking to get one round further this year, we put our hands together for Dynamite, Darren Appleton. <laughs> Your referees for this match are Mr. Don Volkauer and ranking the ball from Mr. Bruce Butler. Good luck, gentlemen. All right. They're going to lag for the break. Looks like it's going to be a good one. Looks like Boosty's going to win the break. Win the lag, so. Not as close as they expected to the bottom row, but they, whatever works. All right. All right, here we go, folks. This is the last semifinal match before the finals later on tonight. Torsten Holman already secured his place in the finals. And the yep. 2013 World 14.1 World Straight Pool Championships here at Steinway Billiards. And Darren Appleton is trying his hardest to make it take the other spot away from sure. Pusta Monte. All right, he laid down a, not the greatest break. He's got to get that cue up closer to the end rail. See, that wasn't the best. It's going to give Bustamani a chance at that one. And that's that's crucial in this type of uh, yeah, it is. you know race. You're playing Bustamante. He's one of the top players on the planet. And he makes a five too. Looks like he might be getting down to play the five. No, he might be playing the three ball. We do have a referee for this event for this uh, this match. So you might hear someone in the background calling out the balls that they're playing. Well, Todd ball was yeah, he could cut it. Oh, landed where he might not be able to see the seven. No, go back the four. Do you go for the bank here? Yeah, yeah I think he'll definitely bank the four. It, you really can't leave him safe anywhere. You might want right. to nip the four and come back off and leave him up top table and have him doubled up by the ten. What I'm do you think? Uh, well, he's going to he's going to give him the three then. All right. We're going to try and adjust some of the microphones. Yeah, I see somebody saying they can't hear me as well, or they can't hear me at all. Well, he just played a, he played a pretty good safe there. Stayed between the pack and the one. All right, we'll see if... Uh, I'll try and get a hold of Alvin in a second. He can fiddle with the technicals. Darren looks like he's going to try and... I think he's just going to try and bank the two past the stack and kind of follow up in there by the eight and seven. 
a little bit of spin. No, I believe the same safe. Yeah. It's a good shot too. That's just playing down table here. Okay, I see somebody says my voice is good now, so we're set up. All right, I think we're getting the sound under control. Obviously, the picture quality is excellent. He's in a always. bad predicament here. Yeah. Cue ball's on the rails. So he really can't shoot any of these balls with draw. Um, no, he can't do anything. And he nipped the nine and maybe trying to leave cue ball back up on top of the two, uh, to the seven in the back of the rack. That's. I think that's a possibility. He might as well just play one rail into the seven. Just take a take foul. Take a foul and, and uh, bury himself up in the pack because he's going to be in better shape from there, you know, than he would be from here. Of course. The only thing is, if you try to nip the nine, you got to make sure you don't miss the 11 and 7 and go up and you give him a shot yeah, on the yeah, 1 or 2. Right. It's a very touchy shot. Yeah, and from where he's at on the rail, it's... Uh, he's playing something, I'm not sure what. Played the nine ball off the stick. Did he? And he tried to. Well, it might have been a foolish mistake. Does he know who he's playing? Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, he could have just bumped the ball on the rail, left it there, and see what Darren would have came yeah. up with. That's what I mean. Appleton is going to probably take full advantage oh, of, course, of any mistake. Could, this could put Boosty in the hole early. Yeah, this might put him in third. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't know about that. I mean, 200 is very possible, and I would love to see it from any player. Oh, that would be you know, great. It doesn't really matter who it is. Um, but relinquishing the table like that on a on a carom back cut yeah. that he tried was a little chancy this early. Yeah, exactly. This early in the set, you know, you don't want to, in the, in the race here, you don't want to, literally, he handed control over to Darren. Of course. I mean, Darren's already got confidence coming into the match. Now he just literally gave us more confidence right Absolutely. away. Absolutely. He's thinking, man, this guy can't play. I'm going to go right through this guy. we making mistakes like that. True. Not the eight. He'll probably just come back and get the ten in the side next, or the three and the four, too. Either one. He takes the three out. He gives the other two balls a little bit more room yeah. to help pocket when he wants to take them off the table. Looks like he's got the 11. Yep. I don't yeah. know if the 7 goes by the 12. Probably not. He'll probably try to get those balls in the same pocket he's playing 11. Come two rails around. Oh, he gets that. up high enough. Yeah, but does it go? Does the 6 go by the 7? He can't get to the 7 right now, I don't think. He's probably trying to get a little bit higher and maybe make the 7 first in between both of them. All right. Just he might, quite didn't get there. He might have to play the 14 now. He's going to play the 4 and go up tail and get rid of the 15. That's not a bad shot. He's still trying to get that angle on the 7. Oh, yeah. Or the he's 6. Or the 6, all right. That was a good shot also. He might leave the 15 for his key ball. He's got the 11 as a break. Yep. All right, if the six goes, he's pretty good. He'll just bump that stripe out of the way. Now it goes past the seven. Yeah, he's good again from here. The only trouble ball, which is not that big a deal, is the one. You want to get up above the 11 and one. And uh, play it that way. Get the two out and the one. Right. And have the seven afterwards. Well, the one's actually in a little bit of a delicate spot. I know. That's you what know, I'm saying. Which is, uh, I think that's the 11 for, uh, for the break. Left us off a good angle. Play the 15 to get down here on these balls. Right. 
If you can get straight in on the two a little bit, it looks like you can just draw back a, a touch for the, for the one in the opposite corner pocket. Let's see how tight it is. Can we check the up table camera? Yeah, so he's probably going to have to shoot the two and land on the side rail, try to get the one out yeah. to leave the 11. Shouldn't be too much of a problem for him. Right. I think he went a little high on that. Yeah, if he wants to do that. Now he might have to play the 11. Get on the one. And break. And yeah, use a side, side pocket break. That's not too bad from here, too, because it tends up kind of far enough. He's not going to go into the side of that stack. You know, he might glance off the top of it a little bit and, uh, and mm -hmm. come back out. He'll, he'll, he'll have another shot after this. If he lands, say, say he gets the cue ball back to where he's at right now on the break, the 10. Like you're saying, it's perfect. You can just follow off the top of the rack, go to the opposite side of the table. Yeah. If you shoot the 11, you got to make sure you don't bump the one down to the bottom rail where you don't have a shot. Kind of got a stun stroke it, nip the one, leave it in front of the hole, and have the cue ball come to the left a little bit. Yeah, I just tried to move it a little bit. Yeah, we're going to work on that, score ta on that scoring table for you so you guys can see the score with the camera angle. He's going to have to come forward one rail. It's a tough shot with the bridge. High yeah, ball with, a, with left, English. high left. Uh, it didn't, didn't get up, up high enough. This is risky to play it in the corner, I'm sure, if you can. But uh, you got to weigh your options and the percentages of the, how hard you got to hit it to get into the stack. Well, uh, that brings up a good question. Uh, As far as uh, shooting this in the corner, if you were playing this this early in the round, you think you'd be comfortable shooting that in the corner? Do you want to, do you want to try and make a statement right now? And uh... um, I don't have a big problem with it, depending on how much angle it is. Like, if I could shoot it basically with just middle ball right. and no English, I'd shoot it. But if not, I might be a little hesitant about it at this part of the match. Yeah, so I'm, see, I'm not sure if he can... He would have to draw a little bit into the top of the stack, but you could get stuck. Well, I don't know if he's got a draw. He's got a touch of an angle. He can just play like a center ball, like you were saying, almost like a stop shot, like forced stop shot. Try to nip the and, nine and, a little and, bit. Yeah, he'll hit the nine or the, or the five a little bit, and he'll push to the side. That might be what he's going to do. Okay. He just nipped it a little bit, and he pushed oh, right across man, the top. Oh, really wow. Guy. How did that work out? That could have been ugly. He would have froze behind the one. Right. Well, he's going to play this. He's going to hit the 14, I think. Or the 10? It's tough to see from here, but I don't think he should hit these that hard. He's got the one. That worked out okay. I was afraid that if he caught the side of that ball, he could have went up table just past the stack. That's a six go by the four, because that could be a secondary break. One ball, try to get up on the one, on the five. Yeah, the 14, the 14 might go by the 11 <clears throat> in the lower right. That would be a great secondary from here. He's got a good angle. Just play the nine, come two rails. If he wants to draw, like he's saying, he could do that, get to the 11. He'd come two rails up and get an angle on the 15 and go back into him. He's going to use the 11. Might not be the greatest break shot. Because depending on how he comes off the three, right. the seven is going to shoot straight across the table, and the three is either going to go up and First hit the eight. I've seen him do this again. He's probably just going to play the three, follow through these balls. There you go. All right. You see, he really didn't get the break that he wanted. Yeah, since uh, the first break didn't break him out completely, he's just uh, going through them here and there through this rack. You don't have to. I don't want to take a chance to hit him real hard and hope to get something again. No. He's smart enough to figure out <clears throat> to land the cue ball on an angle to get into the rack here soon. 
He can play to 14, it looks like. He can come one rail in and play to 4 or 6 in the same pocket, or to 5, which will get him on a 15 and 7, you know. Right. Is he cutting the 55 uh, he, in the he, side? He, yep. Wow, good shot. That might have been his only shot if he chose to shoot that. Right. Well, that apart. Got the 7 4 as a break, the 15, 15. got plenty of options. Yeah, 8's a good key ball for the 15. He's probably choosing the 15 now since he broke those loose. Do you like just rolling the three ball in, trying to get the six next up in the corner? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> and, unless it goes by the four. If it goes by the four, then you just wait to get it. Which it, I think it does, so. Let's see if we get a better look on that. Yeah, it's got plenty of pocket for the six. Okay. That's not that big of an issue right now. Maybe now he'll just take it out. He threaded the needle there. Good shot. Yeah. So, you know, I see the end pattern if he can do it. If he can leave the, get the six and four out of the way, come up, get the seven, go back down, either have the nine in the corner, eight in the side, two in the corner, or you can go opposite. You can go two in the corner, eight in the side, nine in the other corner. Got a very good end pattern there to leave the 15. Yeah, he's going to play, it looks like the yep. six, four, two, nine, eight would be a good out. Probably gonna play the nine first. Cause you can just come back to where he's at, play the nine, eight and a side too. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I, again, you know, we touched on this yesterday a little bit. You know, there's plenty of different ways these yep. guys can get out. There it is. Oh, he's got a little forward now. Should be okay though. Just a little bit of two would have been a good option, but if you go over and you get too far on the rail, he would have had a chance going into the nine or right. and going around again. So he went the simple way, what the table told him was correct, if you can stay in line, which is yeah. the key. Wow. That's the hardest part of the game. Well, I think staying in line is, uh, is super important. But what these top players do better than everyone else is that once they get out of line, yep. you know, they get out of position, they get right back in one or two shots later. And that's, that's key. If you want to be a good straight pool player, or any type of, you know, pool player, rotation, nine ball, ten ball, he yep. might just draw this a touch. He doesn't need to come too far up the table. Perfect. All right. Boosty's regretting that decision he made, I think. Of course. But we got a second here. We want to give a special thanks to Ron Mason and Gotham Technology for the tech support of the uh, NYC Grind Hall of Fame tribute videos. Thanks a lot, Ron. He does good work, too. Yeah, they were very nice. Me and uh, Megan were actually at the banquet dinners and uh, watching the videos and stuff. It was, it was cool. You know, you get everybody together. You get stories of background players of such. Right. Uh, the feeds and mentions of people in videos. You know, you can just feel the the vibe of how we're all connected kind of as a family. Right. You know, a second family in the pool world. On the table, we may not like each other for a couple of hours, but afterwards, we're, for the most part, we're all... Yeah, typically everyone gets along. Good guys. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Well, a lot of people take this personally. Oh, I'm better than you. I can beat you. And, you know, they get the... Well, that's an ego kind they of They get a little that's crazy. The nature of human beings sometimes. Yeah. All right. He's got a perfect angle here. Cue ball's going to go into the seven, it looks like. I'll probably just stun draw it. Maybe a little bit of left come off. There you, there go. you go. Had small spin on it. Uh, yeah, they might, they might be lined up pretty good. He's got the six, and he's got the nine. He can go into him with the nine if he wants. That would be a good angle. If you get on the rail, you can draw up into the 8, and you glance to 8 and 3. And then push Break everything those loose out. The 10, 5, 4. Yeah, whatever you need from there.
All right, Appleton is 27. The Boosties, 1. So I'll follow through these. You'll have the five ball next. There you go. Six balls to break shot. He's got any one of the balls above it there for a key ball. Yeah. He looks real composed. Can he follow down without missing the foot, without nudging the four? Looks like he's okay. Yeah. If he's got a bit of an angle on the nine, he can come back and play the four, follow over for the seven, and then the ten, get the ten ball out of the way, so the eight's got a pocket. Mm -hmm. Or he can just go and get the ten now. That's a good choice, because if he would have landed short, I think the two ball went in the opposite side. So I'm sure he looked at that just in case he didn't get real good on the 10. All right. Now he's got to stroke this one pretty good. A little bit of inside left. Get get up past the four ball. There you go. Two balls laying good for a break, so you want to try to leave that there. Like you were saying, the combo on the 14 11... Probably not trouble, but they both go down in this corner, bottom right corner, if you get the 12 out of the way. 14 probably goes already now, but if you get the 12 out, now they both go down in the bottom corner. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of spread right there between the balls. He doesn't need to play that combination, because you can't guarantee where that first ball is going to go sometimes. You know, and with everything spread open the way it is, he'll play the 14 now. Then he might play that ball in the opposite side pocket there. Yeah, he lays good for that. Just follow through it. You can play the 11 or the 1. Perfect. He might decide to leave the 8 as his key ball. You know, he'll play, uh, I guess, well, he could have played this. You can, you can play it anyway, really. You know? He's going to play the 12, 8, 7, 1. That could work. The way he's playing, he's landing perfect on all of his angles. He basically ain't doing too much with the cue ball, just hitting middle ball just and going wanna, with the angle. I want to nudge the two there, that would have hurt. Just he must might have been trying to get straight on the seven, but he's still okay. He's all right. He just bumped us off the rail, inch or two. That's simple as cake here. Yeah. Appleton's already run over 100 a couple of times this week. He hit you with a, what he hit you with? 149, 149 or something? 149, which is the high run of the tournament still, I believe. So, he, that might have been a huge mistake Boosty made. Yeah, even though it's a race of 200, I mean, it don't feel good to be down, you know, 112 to nothing. Then you get to the table and say the guy leaves you a safety battle. Right. And you got to nip a ball long table and you're like, ah. Oh. You know, and so you hit a thick. Yeah. And you got you leave a guy shot and he runs fifty six on you, guess what? You're down hundred and seventy nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it could be brutal at times. I mean that's what happened in my match with that. He he broke the balls very good. I went ahead and chose to try to back cut an eleven ball because it was a close dead ball in the rack, but I just didn't really like it. And then I I didn't want to give him an opportunity. Right. Right. Bear down on eleven, unfortunately overcut it, and then it cost me hundred and forty nine balls. And um, that's what can happen. You know, Boosty took the chance on the billiard, didn't make it, and uh, Appleton's at the table and probably will be there for a little while. Yeah, he could, uh, wouldn't that be something if he ran the set out? Yeah, it, 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 it can happen. Like I was saying, I'd love to see it. And you follow through this with yeah, inside? Yeah, I think a high right. I think a high. Come back to where he's at. Yeah, a little spin to get outside and above the, t uh, above the stack. Yep. Looks like he had a little bit more high than he did right, so it just came straight up towards the side. Yeah, he's got the 10, it looks like. He's got the, he might have that uh, combination, the 5 4 ball. Uh, he's got the 13 up table. He's pretty good from here. And he can use the 3 as a secondary. He can use the 3 or the 7 if it goes by the 6. Yep. He's he can a, actually get the, try to get on the 3 next if he wanted to, shoot that ball off table, come back around middle table. Right. Because then you'd have the combo on the 5 4. He's going to shoot it now, it looks like. That's a little tricky because if you shoot it naturally, the cue ball goes towards the seven. 
And if you don't get a shot on the five, you could get frozen up on the seven. And then the ten ball don't go up in the corner right. because of that ball up there. Yeah, I think the shot is to take that uh, 13 off the table now and get position, like you said, for the three. He's not going to jack up. He's probably just going to come back and forth. There it is. Good shot. Yeah, a lot of players might have opted to jack up and draw it one rail. Try to soft spin it. Yep. Right. That's a mistake, kind of, because it takes a lot. It takes a lot of control for something like that, you know, to execute that type of shot. And you, know, you can't let your stroke out, too. Exactly. The way he played it, you just make sure you pocket the ball, let your stroke out, and come naturally two rails across. You're almost guaranteed position, and you're going to increase your chances of pocketing that ball. He's going to draw off of this, I believe. A little bit of low left. Nope, he just took the angle and followed through. That was okay. Yeah, it was a good shot. He's got the seven now if he wants to break them up a little bit more. He read the rack to where if he followed through, he would miss the six. That was his insurance if he don't, but he still has the seven now because he broke them out. He's got to think about a break shot. You know, the ten is a good choice. A little high, but uh, you know, where the eleven is, it's almost like a, a natural to use the ten. He's going to shoot six, follow up, and maybe get the one next in the bottom corner. Right. There it is. That clears. Hopefully yeah. that clears it out a little bit. At 15 and 12, he can probably pocket either either one after he shoots the one if he wants. He might also nudge. If he's got a little bit of an angle, he might nudge the 10 ball a little closer to the 14. Yeah. Now he's got the seven. He's got the nine. I think he's got all three in that pocket. If he was down a little bit farther, he could have shot the 9 and bumped the 12 to get the 15 out. I'm sure he's trying to do that. If he plays the 7 now, he might have that little 3 ball combination that will push out the 15 a little bit. Yeah, it might be too steep for that, so he don't want to take a risk. Right. Since the 5 ball's there, you just come up a little bit and get your angle on that 9 ball to bump it. I think he went too far again. Yeah, he did. He's going to just have to accept now that it's going to be the 10 ball. Our waitress just came by and handed us some sodas. Thank you, ma'am. So yeah, there he goes. He pushed out the 15. Perfect. Well, it's just outside. Now he's got a little bit of a cut shot on the 11 or the 12. So he might even actually play the 15 because he didn't get the result that he wanted. Still stick with the 10 to aim for the top of the rack. Yeah, that's what I think. He can play the 11, come back down, but like you're saying, he's got it's natural position for the uh, for the 10. He can he can leave the seven ball too if he really wanted to behind the rack rack. Yeah. Not sure if he's accustomed to. That kind of shot or not? They just gave the traditional round of applause for a high run for a run of 50. So Appleton is 25 percent there, and he's still looking real solid right now. I'd right, say so well, he can go eight. 12, 11, 14, and then come to the 10. That's what he's playing for here. I'm going to give a quick shout out to Inside Pool Magazine, JR and Alvin and the gang for all they do for the sport. You guys need to thank them very much. Buy them some beers when you see them. They're putting up a great stream here for you guys to enjoy. They're doing an excellent job at it also. All week long, man. How do you beat that? You can't. You know? I mean, for a free stream, then you get to watch the best pool in the world. You know, it's, it's something else. That yeah. You a get lot to, of people just don't appreciate it. You get to watch the best straight pool in the world day after day after day. 
you know, the entire week. It's been nothing but excellent matches. Top players, top conditions. Yep. Can't beat it. You really, you guys need to be in New York to watch this up, up hand, up, up close and personal. Appleton just does not look like he wants to miss. I feel, kind of feel like I've seen that before. You have a little deja vu, are you? <laughs> the shirts, I think, for the event are uh, Focused Apparel. Yes, they I are. I believe. So you can probably check out Focused Apparel website. I would imagine. Yeah, it should be focusedapparel.com, or uh, you can search it on Facebook or something of that nature. And uh, get any info you like. Or you, or you just come to the pool hall here. Yeah, of course. Come to Steinway. Area. Steinway Cafe and Billiards. We are in Queens. I think we are in Astoria, Queens. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, five minutes out of New York City, five minutes from LaGuardia Airport. So if you can get to an airport, you can get here. Yeah, Plus, yeah. after this, tomorrow starts the Steinway Classic, the second annual Steinway Classic. All the top players in the world are going to be here for that. Not just the straight pool players, nine ball, ten ball players, you name it. This place is going to be packed with the best players on the planet. Yeah, I can vouch personally for the quality and uh, design of the, the shirts because I'm a uh, player for Brian Russell, who's the owner of Focus Apparel. And uh, they put out a great product and, you know, are deliberate in their work of producing a good product. So get out there and support them if you guys like three ball good if you roll down a little bit get that out of the way or, or the 12 ball first whichever one you want to do he's so straight so he basically can't do too much with the cue ball I think he can roll down just a touch play the three and he might have angle on the uh, 11 to go back into him a little risky because he doesn't have a guaranteed shot, but the way the rack is spread out, he's guaranteed to hit it, and it doesn't look like there's a possibility of a scratch. You know what I'm saying? If he comes in it, uh -huh. then he's got that the 5 and a 15 on the outsides to keep the ball from going too far outside the stack. Yeah, because the only other chance it would have would be get out the middle table and shoot the 15 follow into the top of the stack, but that's not going to, it may not get them all completely because the 11 ball's off of the 9. I'm sorry, the 12 ball's off of the 9. He could follow over and get an angle on the 15 for the side pocket also. Well, he's going to have to pick pick one of them. Far. He's going to have to pick one of them and make up his mind, you know, because he's running out of options. Could be a good he could get the seven ball out of the way here if he wanted to, since he's landed straight on it. Come back a little bit, you'll have the 11 or the 15. He's shooting at 12 and maybe aiming to bump to five a little bit. That wouldn't be a bad shot. Yeah, it Ooh. didn't really come out as much as he wanted them to. Yeah, he was trying to hit the five, so that, that's one of the reasons he landed like that. He still got the five. Uh, six ball kind of popped out a little bit. I don't know if he can get the uh, 15. 15 still looks like it'll go past. Yeah, it'll go. But there's a good shot here. He's going to try and watch him cut this five in. He's going to have to... Can he, can he miss the 11, go under it, two rails and out? That's what he's hoping. Yeah, nice shot. There it is. Perfect. Now he's got the 8 to get himself on the 15 to break him back up again. Or if he's got enough of an angle, a decent angle, he can play the 6 to break him up again. And if he kind of gets stuck in there a little bit, he might be able to shoot at the 15. Is he just going to hit this hard? Because the 12, if it hits the 9, it's going to break the 4 and 1 out. Because they're touching, it looks like. Yeah, they're both going to dissipate. I like getting a better angle, because he's kind of straight on the 15 right now. Well, that's what I mean, if he can shoot the 6 from here. Yeah, I don't think he can. If he could, he would shoot the 6. There you go. Yeah, he didn't. Maybe he's going to shoot the 15, come back a little bit, and then shoot the 6. He's going to have to now, yeah. That's okay. That'll still work. It'll get him done, you know. He's getting it done. 
Now, why that's a better option is because it, when he does that, the cue ball will hit the eight, which is going to make all those four balls around it. Or the two, I'm sorry. will hit the two. And that guarantees those balls to come out. But if you hit the 12 on top, it might only make the nine and four come out. He's got to hit this hard enough, I think, to make sure that the nine ball comes out to the side rail and back in again. Oh, that's, that's his break it. shot. Pretty good. All right, the two came out. Going. He's going to have the combination. Oh, he's got the 13 in the side pocket mm -hmm. from here. That's he definitely what you shoot. Yeah, he can play the 13, 4, 11, 9, you know, and get out that way. Might even be able to play the 1 next, depending on his angle. Yeah, if he can get under the 2, yeah, he'll do that now, probably. Get that out of the way. Come back across, get the 9 and 11. Or the 4, depending on how far he wants to go. Yeah, he's got to play the 1 now, because he's got the position for it now. That's the best thing to be, if you can get to the 1 and then shoot the 11, leave the 4 and then the 9 will give you an angle to get up to the 7 right. on the side rail. I think it's tricky though, coming back across because well, the natural angle is aiming towards his break ball, so he's got to make sure he gets English. Yeah. He's not English on this. He does want to hit the 7. He might come up above the 7. Looks like that's what he's going to try and do. Yeah, he didn't want a chance hitting his break ball. Right. He can stop from here practically or just roll forward a touch and he'll have the four ball. That'll be next. And then he's got the uh, 11 or the 9 and from there he can easily get up table off of either one of them, uh, them, those two balls. And here you want to make sure you get up off the rail enough because if you leave yourself on the rail yeah. And you have to shoot the 9, you're going to be forced to bump the 11. So make sure you get up far enough. Maybe a diamond. Yeah, at least a diamond here. Or at the very minimum. Yeah, about there. Yeah, at the very minimum, he wants to be straight in on the 9. This way he can just come back. He wouldn't have to glance into the 11. He'll still have a good shot. Let's play the 9 and stay under the 11. And then just come out one round. Perfect. He's on his way, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. He's running balls, and he's confident. He's running smoothly. He's not hesitating. This is perfect pull. He's picking and choosing the correct time to get his breakouts, so he yep. has multiple shots afterwards. Yep. If you guys want to style your game after somebody, you know. It's not a bad he, choice. He wouldn't be a bad choice. All right, a couple more people I want to thank that are bringing you to stream. Besides Inside Pool Mag, uh, NYCGrind.com with Jerry Tarantola. He's here all week. Dragon Promotions, Charlie Williams. CNGGas.com. Uh, Steinway Birds, of course. Beautiful room. You know, beautiful equipment. I think he's got 27 tables. Excellent food. Full bar. Excellent video staff. Video games in the back if you're into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which I am. I was back there playing the racing game the other day. Oh, yeah? Probably put $5 in it, back to back to back. Nice. Get your mind. going right into the 8, coming off the rack. He spun down a little bit. Does the 13 ball go by? He's got the 14 if it doesn't. 6 ball looks like it's up in a little bit of a tough spot. If it's off the rail enough, he can play it in the side. But if it's too close to the point and he can't play it in the side, that's going to be an issue. Looks like he can make it in the side. Yeah, Let's see so. from here if you uh, can tell. Yeah, it looks like it's off. He might have a half an inch between the ball and the rail. He's looking to make sure where he wants to aim this cue ball after he cuts in the 14. Now you can aim it towards the 9. If you go in between the 9 and 11, it's perfect. You can come up and get the 4 or the 6. Well, Even if you bump the 9... I mean, you, you should come out with a shot. Even if he hits the 11, if he hits one of these balls, he can still have, it looks like he's got the 1. Yeah. Uh, he might have the 8 after that or the 15. He's got the 6 or the 3 up top. You, you basically aim it in between the 9 and 11 here. If you hit either one, you're fine. There you go. Okay. 
Now the only issue he's got to deal with is getting a 9-ball out of the way because it blocks both the 4 and the 11, but that shouldn't be too hard for him. I like going ahead and taking the 3 out here if it's not too much of a cut. What do you shoot next, the 15? Yeah, you can do that. Come down and get the 12 as long as you're not too straight in. If you can follow you know, to the rail. Well, he's going to play the 14. Oh, there's the 12 the next. Go? Oh, he stunned it down. That's good. You can't hit the 9. Do you, you try and go into the 11 from here? That's what the angle's saying. Try and break them out? You do. I don't think you can hold it to play the 6 up in the corner if it doesn't go on the side. You've got to kind of stay on that rail. If you can play the 6 in the corner, you can knock the 9 out and come one rail for the 13. And the only thing I see, if you can leave the 4 and 11, that's perfect for an end pattern. you got the 4 and then 11 as you break. Right. So if you follow and the 6 ball goes, that's how you go with it. Looks like the 8 ball is, is good. That's what he played for. He's going to push the 10 towards the, four, towards the 11. Yeah, that is tricky. You know, it might come, uh, might glance off the, off the 1 or 7. If he played the 6, and, and if the 1 ball goes, that would be really good. Because then you can bump the 7 down. And then have the 8 or the 10 in the side, and then you have the 7, you know what I mean? Right. You think he plays a 4-9 combo? No. Not a chance. See, he's still trying to see see what he's looking at from the top of the table. The eight looks tough. The one. He's got the eight. He's still tied those up a little. I think he plays the combo right here. Yeah, he kind of tied the one up. It looked like the one went. Unless he plays the 6 that comes across the table for the 13. Can he roll it in and stay on the 9? Yeah, it looks like he can. That's not too bad. You spin past the 13 now? Yeah, you got to get to the other side of the rack. 13 and maybe the 5 goes. It, it's probably tight because of how close it is to 11. But, um... You want to you want to try to get an angle to bump these balls loose a little bit. This is just a small spin, basically middle ball, just with some side right spin. If he can see the five, he's going to play it. If not, he's got to play the thirteen. But then he's kind of running out of uh, possibilities. It looks like the five might go in the pocket. Yeah. You know, uh, that's what he's looking at now. See if he can get the five in and push out the seven into the one. As we were saying earlier, don't push it too far because it can land over there with the 11 and 4. This is just a touchy shot. I just want to try to suck. Oh, he didn't have the 5. So he's going up to get the 5 in another hole. Yeah. He could be saving the 11 and 4, like you said before, about his, his end game. And use the 11 as his break shot. Good shot. Yeah, he's got the seven now. He can go up for the one ten and then four. All right, you know, seven ten one four. Any way he wants yeah. to do it. Well, or, ten ball goes too. Yeah, or ten seven, or ten one. You know, if he's got angle. Main focus is you want to try to be in around the middle table, uh, or a little bit to the right for the four, so you can hold for the eleven balls to break. Probably gonna go ten one seven. Uh, he, he's trying to get up there. He, he's okay. He'd like to be a little bit farther so he's straighter in, but right. I, tr I trust that he'll just roll this in, take the angle, and land on the 7. It looks harder than it probably is from here. Just a center ball, pretty much. Yep. There you go. He's got the angle on the 7. This rack is over, too. That might, that might bring him to 83. Well... He's getting closer and closer to that century mark. He's warming up, and Boosty's cooling down. Well, Boosty was cool after he played the billiard. He's got a little more angle than he wants right here. 
Yeah, that's what I was saying. He needs to be a little bit closer. He can hold it, though. It's going to be tough, but just pinch it soft. He's going to stay right near close to that 11, too. There you go. Perfect. Good one. All we do, he's got his cut. Again, you know, he takes what the table gave him. And off he's going. He's at, I think he's going to have 80. See, the thing in here, here usually happens is guy gets to a, a rack like that where he struggles. He makes the right shots to break him out. Now he's got a great break ball. And he's going to probably hit these a little bit harder than the last ball because it wasn't as simple. Right. And he's going to be back to having an easy out. And it's just going to alleviate the stress a little bit to the rack before. Basically, going into the middle of the rack, he's going to hit the 15 or the 1. He's going to come he's forward, it looks. He's aiming to follow it, just straight high. Oh, he just oh, it. Yeah, he just stunned it over. A lot of spin on that cue ball. Lots of spin. He's got the 8. He's, he's fine from here. He's got the 15 if he wants it now. That's a good break shot, so he'll save it maybe. You know, there's a hundred different ways you can run this out. If you get the seven ball out of the way, you got the four ball that'll go down in this corner after he gets back to the left side of the table. Right. Which will be his secondary break to break out those last cluster. We could just follow up the middle table if he'd like to. Right. Maybe have the if the twelve. He's gonna play five. Get that. Out. That's that's a good shot. Get that out of the way because now you can follow up. Have the three, two, or ten down in this bottom corner. Put the five out of the way. Right. You might go up for them now. Two or three. Perfect. Or uh, he came up short. Yeah, he's got the twelve. He's got the twelve. Go forward a little bit. He'll have the four. He'll have uh, whatever that is, the 13, maybe 11. The nine's in there, I think. He's going to have tons of uh, options. Yeah, he's just going to get these out in whatever pattern he chooses. And all, like you said, all the three of those connected yeah. probably go in the bottom right corner. Yeah. He's got the three. He'll go right to the one because that's the natural angle. And then from there, he can draw back past the 10, make him play to 6. He can do whatever he wants. Looked like he was got a chance following that off of the 10, but that could get the cue ball towards the side pocket. So he, That's a little risky, but it looks he's like... He's going to hit it. You hit this soft. Yeah, just he's over okay. the top of it. He might he might be keeping a 6 as his cue ball. That would be nice. Yeah. Just past center of the table here and to get the shot on the 10. Uh -huh. Yeah, came a little short. Yeah, he did. He could probably follow straight down and get the 14 next. Yeah, without touching him. If he goes into him, he's going to be a little, you know, a little risky. That's what he did. Yep. Now, if he wants to, he might have the four on his side right now if he's dead straight. There's a couple of things he can do. I think I predicted this simple rack, didn't I? Yeah. I think he's got the speed of this table down. Yeah, you can tell he's starting to loosen up a little bit because he's not rolling everything one rail. Right. He's, he's stunning balls to go to natural angle. He's at 84. Visualize and, and now he's starting to get loose. Yeah. That's oh. nice. When yeah. that can happen, it's really nice. That's... He's going to have almost an identical break shot as last rack. There you go. 97. His run out right now, he's at 97. 
I do enjoy watching this. Yeah, this I know is great. I, I play at this level, and I'm a pro player too. But uh, when, ever since I was a teenager, you know, watching like guys like Johnny Archer, uh, Buddy Hall, Earl Strickland, all these guys, you know, when I watched, I just picked up what they were doing and why. You know, not that they were just better than everybody else. I just wanted to know why they did it. Right. And as I'm watching Darren, why he's staying to one side of the table, um, making a ball, getting it out of the way, so three or four balls are going that same hole. These are the things you got to pick up in order to improve your own game. And uh, that's just what I choose to do, just because I love the game. I mean, and I know if I don't pay attention, I'm not going to get better right. without watching. Right. You're always learning in this sport, always learning something. There you go. He's got the 11. That's going to be 100. Right now. You don't have no simple secondary breaks here. Well. How about 11? Roll over 4. Can you shoot the 2 on the side and then come down into these balls? He could do that. He can roll over to the end rail almost and play the 4 now and then go into him with the 4. But that might be a little too risky. 100. He's got the two right now if he wants. He can power through the rack with a high ball and come down just underneath the seven and blow out the bottom of the, of the rack. Yeah, so if you hit the ball that's above the nine, almost dead on. Looks like the 11. Right. Well, that would be... Because uh, then you can maybe have the 10 inside, seven up in the corner. And if you follow through, like you're saying... You're yeah. going to glance off that ball. Either way, it looks like it's Balls the 11, maybe. Down table. Yeah, you know. He'll have... If he, he can't really get stuck in there, I don't think. But he'll have the 2 or the 7. He's thinking about that, but he's just making sure that nothing bad can happen. Yeah, he's trying to eliminate all the negatives. He might roll forward on the 3 and then play the 2 on the side. don't like it. He's looking it might, if he hits it harder, he might glance the 7 a little bit. Right. Which that could slow the cue ball down and then you do get stuck in there. Or if he glances the 7 at the right way, he might come off the 8. And scratch. Yeah, you know, and scratch. Yeah, you got, you got to like shoot this 2 ball on the side. And get it, this goes right into these balls. Five balls in a good spot. It's not on the rail. So say you land in there, these balls come over to the right, and you stay there with the cue ball. Now you might have the five. Right. Yeah, he'll end up with something here. He's got the seven, like you said. He's probably still got the five. Yep. He might have the six fourteen. He might have that after he plays the seven. <clears throat> He's got that. And it goes. He can play that now. Push out the uh, the 12. Excuse me. Yeah, the 12 off the 10 for a break shot. Now you don't. I don't think he wants to shoot the eight now. Because I mean the five because the eight's there, and you could get a double kiss and the cue ball can land back here behind these balls. Yeah, that the could end. Go that could table. end kind of funny. He definitely won't get the result he's looking for. Yeah, he's going to play that like I said, and uh. The 12 should come off the 10. Oh, came yeah, he hit that kind of hard. That's all right. Five goes. Five ball. Ah, his break's probably going to be the four now. Right. Or the six. Under the rack break. He's going to bump the four hair. Well, which is okay. That's not bad. Just makes it a little easier to get into the stack with him now. He's a little higher up. Now, his key ball here is the seven in the side. Right. So, if you want to leave the 9, you want to leave the 11 over here on the rail, the 9, and then the 7. I think you please, nice. yeah. 8, 14, uh, 12, 11, 9, 7. You can even do the 12 next. Just roll up a little bit, play 12 on the side. And then you're right on the 14. That's it. Yeah. You got to see this pattern, right? You got to pay attention because this is the kind of stuff that continues runs. We're going to have a test later. Okay. 
this well, is what it does. It, it right, looks like it, he's he's a mastermind, but all he did was pick and connect the dots. Yep. Now he's got like basically four stop shots. Instead of going up table, down table, up table, yep. down we table. We talked about that during the week also. You know, at the end pattern, you want to have as little cue ball movement as possible because it, it just helps with your accuracy. It helps with your uh, position play. It helps with everything. Yep. I know when I'm at home practicing sometimes, when I can see these patterns, it just makes me so much more confident. And making the balls becomes too simple. Right, right. In one aspect. Right. These guys are such accurate shot makers. Making the ball is not the issue. Right. You know, for these guys. It's the plan to it's the next Exactly. Ball. It's the position. There you go. He is more than halfway there. He looks like he's in to total control. Well, he definitely looks like he's playing a little bit better. He played good on me, but he did make a couple mistakes that I didn't expect. Right. Oh, man, he just grabbed the break ball. Oh, well, yeah, that was a goof. Wow. Four ball. I've done that. I'm <laughs> practicing in my basement. Well, luckily it was the ref that grabbed it, not yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Wow. That shouldn't really make that big of a difference. They'll get it right where it was close to. Yeah, that, look, that looks really close. So they, they did a good job getting it back there. You don't think Boosie's going to say anything about that, do you? Nah, he, he's, he trusts Darren. He knows exactly it was right there in that area. And that wasn't something that Darren had did. Like you said, it was the ref moved it. Oh, Darren, Darren, there would have been a foul, and Boosty would have called him on it. Right. That's for sure. That's just right. part of the, the rules of the it's game. That's rules of the game, you know. Well, hopefully that don't take him out of rhythm because... Uh, no, he'll be fine with that. He's just making sure that the left side of the rack is as close to tight as possible. Right. He wants to get a good spread after he hits him. I'm going to give a quick shout-out to Wild Eyes Creations. I'm a player rep for those guys, uh, along with Sean Wilkie. Absolutely. They do a great job with the products they make. And uh, Q-Shark, uh, the two of us are also player reps for him. And, uh, again, That's he another makes great product another great tip. pool product. So many people out there that uh, don't understand how important it is to make sure your tip's in good shape. Uh, you know, you got little holes in it to keep chalk on it, and uh, that's very important. If anybody's interested in going out there and getting those products, uh, look into it. Absolutely. www.wildeyescreations.com and www.qshark.com. And make sure you tell them me and Wilkie sent you. way they know we're still out there working for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy, um, obviously, all my sponsors that give me help, but I also enjoy doing my part and uh, promoting them. Anybody has questions about the products, you know, I'm here to answer for it and uh, give you the ins and outs. Absolutely. Again, I wouldn't be associated with them if they didn't have a solid product. You know, it's actually something I believe in, and I use them. Mm -hmm. Four ball in the corner. Key there ball off go. the rack. And the key ball lands. It's coming up table a little bit. A little long. He's kind, of, the kind of funny. Kind of funny a little bit. It does have the two, it looks like. He's got the 2-8 and the 13. I know this ain't conventional, but uh, can you go back to the other view with us? Can Absolutely. Because he got the 10 into the 12. The 9 ball might be dead from the 15. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm 13. He went ahead and shot the 2 and just took his angle. That's okay, because it landed into the 13. Now he's got the 10 or the 13. He could shoot the 13 ball and come up and have the 10 to break back into these balls. The only thing is, this is a good shot. Shoot the six and go into him. He's right, got the 13. he's got the 13. Insurance. And he doesn't really have to hit this one that hard. 
No, that didn't really spread the way he wanted, but he's got mm -hmm. the 13 from here, and he can probably shoot the 14 next, or the 10 next, rather. I think it's the 10? No, it is the 14. And uh, use that to break him up. Right. That's the 5 ball down. I think I should uh, knock that out, too, right if, away. If he's got the 5, he should take it now. Absolutely, he's there. Doesn't look like he does, though. He might be able to get the Q in there for a little bit of a draw action. A little bit of a stop shot. He doesn't have to roll it. You know, this way he can come up for 14. Hmm. Well, he's choosing to get the 14 out of the way and then break it with the 3 ball. Yeah, he can play the 10 now and then break him with the 3. Can he get up high enough? Does he have a good angle on the 10? Because if he's not straight, he can't follow straight, you know what I mean? Right. It might be going up table. I can't tell. Well, even if he goes up table a little bit, he can play off the 8, and then he still might have the 11-12. That might be dead combo. Or he can play the 10, come over and get the 9 out, come back to the middle table. Not really sure if that's what he want to do, but... Main thing is, he's, he's focusing on getting a good angle on the 3. Right. Yeah, so he's going to take the 9 out, come back, get a good angle on the 3. Yeah, and then just push through him. Or draw into him a little bit and kind of... Right. He'll come right between the 1 and 7, and he'll push them all apart. Yeah, I like the draw option. If he gets on it, because if you hit the top of the 1, if you draw into the 15, that pushes them up. Right. And then the other one's down. And it, right, and it gives you a little separation. He stays in the middle. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you know what you're doing there, Wilkie. I, I do. I mean, of course I can uh, execute it all the time, but well, it's, it's from watching and just understanding how the balls move out. Right, right. And um, if you yourself, as your plan, can do that and execute it, it, it just gives you a better feeling of, I don't know how to explain it, the in, intricacies of the game. Right. Of what it takes to play at a high level. Right. And consistent to run hundreds like Darren's doing right now. Yeah. If he didn't understand this shot, he may not be able to keep his run. So right. Just pulled up into it. There you go. Push some down, push some up. Key ball stays in the middle. Yep. Now you got to ring a circle of balls around you as options. Exactly. And he's got the 13. It's a good break shot from the side rail if he wants it. Because I don't think he can get uh, 11 or 7 into a good position. Well, he can save the 11 as a break. It's not conventional. Well, but you can land up there and play the side pocket break. Well, he's got to push it out of the rack first. Seven ball might be out of the rack. How about shooting a 15 and trying to bump the 14 a little bit closer right now? Because then you can cut the 11 in the side if you had to. Well, I think you have to put more of a draw stroke on that, and he's going to be jacked up over to seven. Well, shoot the seven, get it out of the way in the side, and then do that. That's a possibility. He tried to get an angle to bump the 11 there. Right. That, that was good. He might have it, too. He doesn't have to push it that far. You know, four inches from where he's at. That's all you need. He's going to go up, come down, and get middle table. Right, and then he can play the 7 and push the 11. Or he can play the 11 now and push the seven. the 7 over. That's good. Because he'll still have the 14. He's got to he's gotta play this soft. He might choose to get the 1 out of the way right now. This way the 8-ball's got an easy pocket to go in. Yeah, see here, it's going to be hard to tell exactly what he wants to do because he's trying to um, manufacture a break ball. Right. Now, this is where it comes down to your player as a creative mind, what they feel more comfortable with doing. Mm -hmm. I think he was trying to hold. Can he bump 11 and still have a shot? Because that's tricky. I was going to, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. If he doesn't push 11 out far enough, he won't have nothing to shoot at. He's yeah, probably trying to hold for the 11 and then bump the 7, but yeah. uh, not too far. 
Okay, you gotta watch what you do here, because if you bump the 7 directly towards the 14, you can't make the 14 in the hole. You'll be straight up and down on the 5, and the 8's over by the rail. He might have to shoot the 14, try to come back across and get a better angle on this breakout. Well, whatever he does, he's got to pick the right shot. He might he... be in that spot where you have to just sacrifice and take the 14 as a break if, if you don't get anything out of this. Well, he might be able to roll forward on the 7, just glance the 11 slightly and push the 10 out of the 5 out. Then he can shoot the 11. That wouldn't be bad. Shoot the 11 in the side and then have the 5 as a break. Absolutely. And the 14 would be, 14 would be the key ball. He did exactly what I said. And he doesn't have a happen. shot now. He's got to play his break ball. Unless he wants to cut the five and come between them, which is risky because he's got a stretch. Well, the 11 ball goes. He, he got away with it. He's got to play the 11 then. Who's going to leave the 14 as the break? That's a tough break shot. It is, but it's just how it ended up laying. Well, let me ask you a question. You think maybe he leaves the five in the stack? In place with a break shot up at the end of the table. He can get good position off the 14. Probably not. I mean, it, it's tough to get a real good angle on that. And then with the newer cloth, it's hard to judge the spin right. to get back down table for the break. So we just take what he has here. I mean, it's going to be one that you're going to be going into and pretty much taking a chance, you of gotta, course. You can scratch in the upper right-hand corner once he comes off the pack, because that's the glance angle, that is the angle of the stack, so he's got to be careful. If he doesn't hit the top of the uh, of, the, of, of a ball in there. Well, it's going to be a visual and a speed control. He's just going to try to get into it and glance up towards middle table. If he goes a little bit past that, that's okay. Well, he's going to have to pound this one a little bit. Center ball. Aim for the middle of the stack. I think he can play this with a touch of draw instead of right hand spin because if he plays it with just a touch of draw and he hits it firm he'll hit closer to the bottom of the stack instead of just glancing off the top oh, yeah, if he this plays is, it with spin he's going to glance off the top like you're saying it's going to be a touch of draw or just a stun shot stun your angle back into the, the rack right, if you see, hit the corner ball you're fine if you hit the middle of the rack you're fine he's got to make sure he at least hits that corner ball because if he comes under it or just glances the bottom side of it, he could either scratch in the lower corners or not have a shot. You know? Puts Darren in a 125 ball run. See, he's looking, he's going to glance and he's going right up towards. Ideally, you know, you'd want to glance and go between the side and the upper corner pocket, but that's something you really don't have 100% of control of. The only good thing is he's coming, the, since the 14 so far down, it's going to be hard to stick because he's coming up at an angle. Right, yeah, he's not going to get stuck in a pack. Oh, he went ahead and he's going to have the two. Wow, wow. That, was... that, that kind of jellied up nice for him. A little bit of an unconventional shot, but... It worked out. Yeah, he got good results. Now, you shoot the two. If you roll the three, nine... Or blocking the hole, you know what I mean? The three can't go. If he soft rolls the two, can he, he can just one? soft roll the seven and come down below it. That's I was going to say for the 11, but he's I got the 4 now. this 15 ball now and break these out. Right. No, no, I think he plays the 4 first. Really? Yeah. Just get just to get it off the rail? Yeah. Well, give him a little bit better angle on the uh, that 11. Now we can draw up into the, uh, into the uh, 12 and uh, 15, it looks like. If you can uh, hit, the, 11, you uh, can hit the 11 square, all yeah. you gotta do is hit it square. You'll have the 5. Oh, he glanced off the Boom, 5. Just like that. It did glance the 5 a little bit, but it worked. And I'll tell you what, this guy is looking like he's determined to run this setup. Man, would that be something. I mean, because right now, he... As a, as a player, you're not thinking like, oh, I'm on 125. You're just thinking about this rack. Right. He, getting to the he, next He's rack. just thinking about this next ball. Yeah. You know, and that's key for everyone, man. Just one ball at a time. The number will come by itself. You can't run 200 in one stroke, you know. I mean, you can't run, put high runs together. You got you just got to shoot one ball at a time. 
That's all you can And do. if you execute properly and you focus on what you're doing, the number comes by itself. The high run will come by itself. I mean, these balls only hit on the side rail. A little messed up, but he can maneuver around them. Yeah, he's got to deal with them. Ideally, he's got to get the seven out first. Or soon. You know, he can play the nine, then he can bump play the, the seven. Six. He would like to bump that up. Oh, that, that was good. beautiful. Took care of that problem. See, now he can play the 12, maybe get the 10 out of the way, then shoot the 5 and go into these balls because the, how the 6 is a lifesaver. Yeah. He really needed it. Right. That would be his, his safety right there. He's at 125. And he really doesn't. So I, I don't know about this. I like leaving that there. Yeah, that would have been a good, uh, a good safety shot, so to speak. I'm sure he's got a plan, but... Uh, well, as of right now, he's got the nine as a break shot. If he wants to play a conventional, but he's got to break out these, you know, he's got to get the one and seven out of there. It's going to be hard to not move the nine with all these balls over there. He's going to try to just pinch this, land on the rail, get the seven ball next. I mean, you can, you can probably squirt it right up in between there, but you don't want to land. Oh, you got to be very careful with On the back shot. side of the one. Well, if he, anywhere on the one, he'll have a shot, because the three goes in the upper left, it'll be a difficult shot, but if he's unfortunate right. enough to tie right up on the one, he'll be able to do something with it. He's going to play the 10 next, so I'm going to look at it. He's got his angle. He might leave the five as the break shot. It's low enough, he just clipped the stack, maybe. Eh, maybe it's too low. Huh. He could play, uh... Ten? Oh. Uh, can you, can you... I don't know if you want to... You like to leave the nine, like you're saying. I'm trying to see... He's got to play the five. He's, he's got to play... He's, he's got to play the... He's, no, I can't play the nine now. That's what he wanted to do. Yeah, but... Well, maybe he can. Maybe he's he can spin here. it. He's going to push the one into the seven, though. He doesn't like it. So he wanted to be straight on the nine, maybe play the three up next, roll down, you know what I mean? Then get the seven out of the knees. He's gonna he's gonna have to soft spin this like a soft mass egg, I think, maybe around the eleven. And if he does roll forward, he'll have the five in the opposite corner pocket. Or a cut on the seven if he gets past the one by a hair. He's gonna try to stay on the three, looks like. Oh, no. Yeah, he wanted to push that more. <laughs> he might be able to go into him now at the five. Is this seven ball go? No, I don't oh. think it goes. It might. I knew this was going to be tricky with these balls over here. Can, can you shoot the five and just try to come up into the seven? Two rails? And this might be what you have to shoot here. You're taking a chance. You're taking a big chance. You're going to push the 7. I mean, if you can maybe soft mass say this one, too, a spin shot, and kind of throw the 7 in, you'll have the 3 or the 5 next. That makes this possible is the pockets are a little bit bigger. And the cloth is still slippery. And it's slippery. Yep. You, you, you can still it. get a bad skid with inside, though. I think he has to go into him with the 5. Because if he bumps them, he might have the 3 or the 11 up table. Can he draw into him? Or has he got to go forward? I think he's got to stun it two rails. you got to hit this with some authority. Yep, that's what he's doing. Stun it down to the bottom rail, come up into him. Oh, he's got the 1. Got away with it. Yeah, if the 1 came off the rail, that would be sweet. And he just follows forward He'll have any one of these pockets. Uh, three down here, the 11 in the side of the 7. Mm. He might be able to play uh, the 1, 11, 7 in the side, or the corner, and drift towards the side rail for the 3 as a break shot. But that's kind of that's kind of iffy. This is definitely an ugly rack right now. Yeah, you just got to follow up. Aim a little short of the side. About one diamond from the side. 
It rolled out. It rolled oh. out, but it did go in. Wow. Man. I thought it would have hit that one a little harder. I was so close to it with the follow, it, it might have, you know, skipped a little bit, stuck him behind the three. Yeah. Seven ball. Is he straight in on the seven? I don't think he is. Well, it looks like he's got, I think, the 11. He can come two rails. Try to get straight on the seven in the side and then follow up for the three? Yep. Or the seven in the corner. He's that, got a big target area. That'd be a good shot. Going that way. Great option, Mike. I like it. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, like yourself, you know. I, I watch the videos a lot. I do a lot of commentary. I see what's going on. You know, I got a lot of knowledge about how to play. I might have landed on the angle. Ah. If he's a little, yeah, he's a little long. He's going to try and go forward. He can actually also maybe play like a stop shot here and kind of drift towards the center of the table and cut the three and go into the stack, which again is unconventional, but he had it come forward. He does have an angle on three. The only thing I don't like about this is now he's got to pound it. Yep. He's really got to stroke this one. Is it 140? 139. 139, rather. Uh, boosty. Not much of a showing from Boosty so far. He's had one shot. One That's shot and one mistake. So, like you were saying, I was stage out here to me. He had 149 on me. Ended up finally missing. I got two 61 balls. Uh, played, I tried to play tricky safety because I had a tough break ball. And... Uh, this is me and Appleton right. yesterday. And I played the, the break ball, right, to break out the back of the rack with my ball I was shooting. And I tried to spin the cue ball to leave it behind the rack at the same time. I got too much spin on the cue ball, came over and left him a shot up table on the six. He makes it, and I can't remember exactly if he ran the rest of the set out, but I didn't get another ball from there. I ended up losing 200 to 61. All right. And uh, this is where we're at here in this match. Now, he's got to be a little bit more precise on this three ball because he's straight down the rail. He's going to hit the nine ball, follow down, off of the rack. And he ended up hitting the yeah. four. He blasts off the four. He's got to land the straight perfect, end. Perfect shot. He's rolling good today. All other breaks have been very good, but that, that definitely there could have been... A lot worse. All right. He rolls up. He might have an angle on the one to go into the stack a little bit. He's come back. Oh, he did have an angle that way. All right. Oh. Ah. A little high here. He don't have an angle. He might have a small angle. He's looking at where he's going to hit the two. But now he's going to have to force this one, too. you got to watch this. You can force and scratch in the hole. He's going he's gonna to have to force through the stack, too, I think. There you go. I come out and he's got the 11. Man, things are rolling his way. Yeah, it was a good shot. If you notice, he didn't stun it, because if you stun it, you stick right there. Right. You, you follow, follow through and take where, what you get on the other side of the rack. Five ball is probably going to be the next breakout. Yep. He's trying to come over and get the five. Now you can just shoot the five. Draw a little bit. Out, draw up a little bit. Back to where yeah, he's at. Yeah, he'll have the eight next if he gets, you know, if he gets unfortunate. Yeah, he, he should be fine. He should be golden from here. He's not going to shoot it yet. He don't. He don't like the more angle. I think you got to shoot it from now. He's just going to get the 2 and 12 out of the way and then shoot it. It's actually a pretty good option because when you do break these balls out to the bottom left corner, you can't tie up with the 2 or the 12 because they're not there no more. Right. Also, though, I mean, if he happens to push through the stack, he eliminates the possibility of a shot. If he removes all the balls from under it, you know what I'm saying? True. If things bank out of the way and they go up table a little bit and he comes through the stack, he just eliminated any chance he had. His speed's he's his speed is on right now, so oh, he just kinda under hit that one a little bit, yeah, but it looks did. like the seven goes. He's got he's got uh Man, he's got everything working for him just right. Five ball. 
You're gonna follow down and get an angle on the seven yourself. Yeah. He just has to touch this one. It's only four balls there. They'll come right apart. He's got the nine as a break. He's got the eight as a key ball. Mm -hmm. Or either one after the shot, you know, he'll be able to shoot something. See his angle. He's, he can just follow this with a little bit of high right. Not too hard. Just touch it. Whoa. All right. He decided to go up tail. He knew he was going to go that way, and he forced through it. I guess he wasn't. Uh, if he would have hit the eight, he could have scratched on the side. Yeah, he took a little bit of a risk there. And these balls are still together. Do you come down... Try to get an angle on the 15 now, and then bump them because you got the 10 after well, the 15 ball shot. That's what the table was telling me. Well, he played a 10, then a 15. Went too far. I no, played a 15 first. Right, right. To bump into him, but he went too far. Well, he might be able to play the 10 now and come up a little higher than he's at, or if he plays underneath and plays the 14 up table. That might go past. You know, he can get the cue in there to play the 14 in the upper right-hand corner. Yep. Might have to be forced to play that after the 15 and 10. 15 How about drawing behind him and then shooting it? Damn it, Appleton. 150. He might have the 13 also. Let's see. Uh, he's got the 13 maybe. No, he's got the 14. 14. This is tricky. See, this is a... He's looking to see if the 13 goes, because if he over-rolls it... He'll have either one. 10 now, right? Yep, that's what you do. You aim for a spot, and wherever you land... There you go. He's got the 13, it looks like. Or the 14, either 14 one. Goes. He'll come up table, play the opposite ball, and then get on the 9. Nine's a little high for a break, but... Man, the way he's shooting... I do not see this being a problem. He's touching the balls good. Yeah, you can say that again. He's got to get right back to where he is now. There you go. 153. Man, huh? I don't, I don't mean to put uh, Bustamani out of this match for now, but uh, I know he's a great player. But I do remember last night at your house, Mike, that I predicted the finals could be what? Yeah, well, Thorsten Holman. Thorsten Holman and, and Darren yeah, Absolutely. That'd be a great match. I know. Nothing against John Schmidt, defending champion, but Thorsten in the last six years has always been right there, you know, and he's capable of that long run. Right. And uh, he's been playing very well this week. Uh, it was just a prediction on my side. Uh, not saying that it was going to happen, but it looks like, as we're speaking, it, it possibly it will might. happen. Again, it's a little thin of a, thin of a cut than he wanted, but... Ah, uh, he's fine. He should be. <laughs> if you, the only thing is, sometimes when you follow this shot, follow him down, you can get a kiss. In the bottom corner. Right. So that's what the only thing he has to watch out for here. I hit the top of the rack, so he's okay. He's got the four. How good is he rolling right now? He's playing good. Speed control is just allowing him shots. Do what you go to into do. these balls? I don't know if you can from here. Oh, you can just hit the bottom rail, go up into the the one because you got these. Uh, you got the know. five and these other balls right here. Uh, See what I mean? The angle. He could have went right into it. Maybe. Yeah, he might have had that. I like that shot. I know he's taking what he has because he has two balls above the racks to go into him again. All right. He's probably gonna get these balls out down here, but I didn't see any trouble in taking that. You can just roll this forward two rails and then play the uh, 
playing a five ball next. Yeah, see, I thought maybe he could win. He could play the seven up table, clear out the three. No, you don't do that on this kind of run. No, it's too risky. His confidence is high, but I, I think it's because you got the easy shot on the five, it'd be awesome to clear it out. Well, that's what I meant. I mean, you almost got perfect position for it. Well, if he gets to the side rail, he, he can squeeze it through and get the three, right? I believe so. He's got to be close, to, you know, underneath the side pocket to get there. Yeah, he can get there right now. Shoot the six. Squirt over there. I think he'll come under the seven? He's going to play the combo. He might, yeah, I was just going to say that. He might just end up playing the combo. Yeah, the three's so close to the hole, so that's a good He's got to be careful. He can't hit this too hard if he wants to shoot the seven next. Well, he's got the two right now. He can go back into him right now and then have the seven as a safety, you know? He's got the 15 as his break. The 11 uh, is out. He's got to maybe do something with the one. I think it just tied those up. The one at 13. But the one goes up in the upper right hand corner. Where did you say the score line? He's at 153, right? Yeah. Is he playing the 12 on the side? I guess the one ball goes down in this corner. It does. I don't think it does. He just looked at it. Shoot the 11, naturally go two rails over here to the side rail. And if he gets on the one, that would be sweet. Well, he's got the 15. That's a good break. He go oh, up? He's going to go into him right here. Nice and soft. And he'll have the 7. He wants to hit the uh, the 13, I think, right here. So what are you saying? Shoot the 14 on the side? Yeah. Unless the one ball goes. If the one ball goes, he doesn't He plays that. it now, but it doesn't go. Oh, it does, I guess. Yeah. It looked like it was a little close. If he can get out of here without touching the 15, he's golden. That's what I'm looking at. He might, I don't know if he can push forward and nudge the 15. I think he's going to shoot your shot. Bump the 13. You're aiming for the 13 here, not the 1. Right. There you go. Now, the reason he didn't, of course, the other shot is if he hits the 15, he doesn't have a break ball. Right. If he tries to draw above it, he scratches it inside. Yep. Do you pinch this and just bump the 15 a little bit, or you just shoot the 7? I don't know. Well, the one yeah. ball is out, too, so you can shoot the 7 and come up. And play the 15. And shoot, whichever, wherever you land, you shoot the one that will get you to the 13. Well, right now, it's either one. Take your pick. I just did a confirmation from the tournament director, John Lehman, and... Uh, if Appleton finishes off these two balls, which we predict, it will put him at 167. 167. And I have a confirmation that for the World Straight Bowl Championships uh, history, I believe, that we have uh, recorded, the high run, which is a tie between Johnny Archer and Thorsten Holman, is 174. Right. And yeah. So if Mr. Appleton gets to 175, we'll have a new record high run. Oh, that's going to be something. And he only needs seven balls, I think. Okay, so 167, if he can get eight, we'll have a new record high run. That'd be something to witness. Yeah, it would be. Especially being on this side, doing the commentating for it. Wow. I mean, I feel like I have so history. many memories. Well, part of history, just memories of... Uh, say something like that comes up and me and you playing right. one day and we want to just talk about what we can do. Oh, absolutely. Uh, where'd you learn that from? Oh, well, I saw oh, Darren Appleton and absolutely. how you run the World Straight Pool. We pointed it out to Darren Appleton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, it's a little bit of history right here you're involved with. Uh, besides the fact that it's the World Straight Pool Championships, you know. <laughs> now, it's a little steeper than he has been in the last couple racks. I'm sure he's okay with it. He's going to find out where the cue ball He's going to contact the rack. After he knows that, he'll pick and choose what English to use on the cue ball. He's going to see exactly where he has to go into the stack.
Gotta make sure the balls are nice and tight. Gonna clean the area a little bit. There you go. Quick shout out to Steinway Billiards. Yeah. Thank you for putting up this event. Excellent room. The owner I heard is a tremendous guy. He is a great guy. Yeah, man, he's he's an awesome fella. He's been uh, helping out the players and all of that such. Anything we need, he's uh, right there for us. Like you were saying, the, the nature and the atmosphere of the room is just uh, makes you feel like you're at home. Right. <laughs> great kitchen, you know, all that stuff. Absolutely. You're comfortable. You're relaxed. Cue ball's going right into the top of the rack. This is just to be another follow. And the 13 ball going right, right out there. there. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, you know what? If you went outside right now, I bet you all the stars would be lined up. You can see the sky. Everything's in line for this guy. I don't know exactly how Booster Mommy's filling in the chair right you now. You can just soft roll this. And then play the 10 into the stack and break him up again. He doesn't have to hit him hard. If he goes forward, he'll have the 5. Yeah. He's in great position to continue his run. That'll put him at 181. It'd be just two short racks away, not even two full racks. Awesome. He's got the 9 or the 8. He make the 5 because he liked the meal. He would love to make the 5. He's got the 9, though. There you go. Roll into the one if you can. You have the ten ball next. If not, you just roll above it. Maybe have the combo or the seven. Perfect. I think he's out. Yeah. Two hundred out. He's just he's his demeanor and he's calm. He's not. He's not having it's not any issues. He's not anything. Everything's smooth. He's not having any issues at all. The break, like you're saying, it's coming out good for him to, to have secondary breaks. He's got a ton of choices. He's picking the right one all the time. You can get the 10 out now if he wants. Now come back well, up towards that, the center. You come back up or you just roll it in. And then, well, you can roll it and then just have an easy shot on the 9 and 8. Well, you could do that. You can force it and come around. He's got the 7. He's got the 12. I just, uh, that he's still got the 8 maybe if he wants. I believe he has just tied the high run record for the World Straight Pool Championships. How many balls do we have on the table? One, two, three, four, five, Eight. Six, he played seven. seven. That was hit. He so just tied it. going to complete the high run. The new high run, ladies and gentlemen. 175 in the World Straight Pool Championships. Never have, has been done That's before. Awesome. Well, the ref is just now announcing it to the audience. The high run in the history of this event. Darren Appleton. Simply amazing. Simply it amazing. Seems like he knows what he's doing. I would think he played this once or twice before. <laughs> uh, don't quote me now, but it seems like, yeah, I would say at least twice. Now, is he going to leave the six of this break? Do you like shooting the nine and leaving the one as your key ball? He's got the six or the three. I mean, preferably if he's going to shoot the three, he's got the eight as his key ball. You know, if he's going to shoot the six, he can use the nine. Right. You know, however you want to do it. He's got the nine. He can play the seven. Seven, six, eight. Uh, actually, he'd like to play... How about nine, six, seven, eight? How about, yeah, I was going to say, oh, six, nine, seven, eight. Got plenty of options here. He's got a ton of options. Or he can go. And they're all pretty simple too. That's the key. He, he can get on that three ball if he wants to keep that for the break any way he wants. He's feeling the heat of the announcement, I'm sure. No, he's yeah. not. Well, not heat. I'm just saying. 
that it slowed him down just for a quick minute. So now he's just reaffirming where he wants to get on these last balls. He's got a, he's got too many choices. That's what he's got. Sometimes it's easier for you to execute when you only got one choice. You know, you only got one option. You got to shoot. It's easy for you to execute. Yeah, because yeah, he took the eight ball out. Well, he can play the six, seven, then the nine. Unless he wants the six as his break. There you go. Play the three, might draw over for the seven or the nine. Play the nine and come two rails off the seven. Now you're saying just stun this a little bit. Yeah. Leave us off an angle. Yep. He didn't roll forward if he had to. He'd play two rails on the seven, but that would be a little further away from the six. Yeah, and if he's straight in on the nine, throwing back might leave him a stretch shot. Right. Two rails out. Now this is a position on the break ball that he hasn't had yet, so this right. is going to be. And this is a speed control a sense shot of how he's feeling. Did he hit it good? Did he get there? He's all right. Did he get there? 181. This is amazing. Two and a half racks. He's 19 balls oh, away. Two plus five. From Not even a half. From a trip to the finals and straight pool immortality. <laughs> well, he's already at that right he now. Just, I, mean, he, I know he hasn't won the match yet, he but cleared that hurdle though. 181 ball run. From this day forward, everybody will be chasing him for the high run now. Now I got myself a goal. I'm going to have to put his picture on my wall with a bullseye through it. Because that's the goal. You're aiming at him now, you know what I'm saying? Everyone's aiming at him. Yeah. Very impressive. Charlie Williams just passed to the room. The awesome feat that Darren just accomplished. The record for the U.S. Open is 182. He might have the overall record altogether. Record for the U.S. Open has just been confirmed. Announcement 182. Right. So you make this ball get a shot and pocket it. He's got two world records in one match. Has anyone ever run 200 and out? I would think not. Since then he might have three records in one match. Good scenario. Checking him out. The stack, he looks. He's just going to glance off the top. It looks like. I'm not sure. Can he? Can he? He might be hitting the top of the ten. I mean, if he drops off, draws it. Of course, he can get to the four. But you don't want to stick. So you got to hit this a little bit. Kind of like that. Look at that four ball. Oh man, he's tied up though. He's got some. He's got a little work here. He can come two rails right now off the four into the bottom of the stack. <laughs> yeah, out. that would be crazy. No, he could, but he can. But what else? Say you nip the three, you go off the table. He can soft roll the four in and play the nine in the opposite side pocket. That would be good. But I, I'd like to get these balls to five, thirteen, and ten, fifteen. You gotta get these out because they don't go anywhere. He didn't get down. He's got the two. It looks like. Can play for that? I think he did. He must have. He overshot so the nine. He overshot the nine horribly. If that's what he wanted to do. Well, that's a good shot, because if you get the 2 out of the 15, let's take a quick look. I'm sure the 15 probably goes past the... Hard to say. 12. Yeah, I think it does. That would make sense, playing position for the 2, because you get the 2 and 9 out, and then play the 15. I think he rolls into the 9, yeah. Very nice. I just Very got nice. my fingers just got dropped off the World 14-1 tournament from Focused Apparel. The nice shirt, shirt. perfect. Uh, collared uh, shirt for tournaments. That's awesome. Nice. I'm loving it. Excellent shirt. See now he's got he's got the 15 like you said. I just you just draw into these. Yep. Nice and simple. Not too hard. He's got the seven. They didn't break open that good, but he's got the seven and the ten. He can go into them, and he'll have the nine. As a key ball, as a as a safety shot. The, uh, 
13 and 5 is a little tricky here still. Just want to check real quick, anybody, the uh, sound and everything still good on the stream? We're getting a little feedback in the, in the headphones here. I just want to make sure everything is good for you guys. Yep, 12 come right out, uh -oh. get the one next. Yeah, but he's got two balls. Be nice if the 13 ball went by itself, but I'm not sure if it does. Because of course you can play the 12, play the one, and bump good. into okay. it. Okay, just feedback on our end then. He might have that shot. 13 might go. Or he might be able to just stun this photo a little bit and play the 5 and 13 up up in the upper right hand corner. Right, pushed out the 11. Nice. He's got the 3 now. Is he going to try to bump these? Or does the 13 go? No, if he comes forward, he might have angle to come forward. Oh. But he's got the 9. He was trying to bump the top half of that, yep. of course. Yeah, he got a little little fortunate there, but he's... Make the 9 and 11 balls next. This is just... Or he, he might have the 11. 11. He's got the 11. Man, he's just feeling good right now. Wow, this is just awesome to watch. This is fun. Unprecedented. Oh, it is a very big word. good choice of words there. It is a big word, yeah. Double points for that one. Follow down one rail, we go two. Nine, thirteen is his key. Yeah, throw back. back out. He'll need five balls after this. Wow. You're going to hear a great applause after this. Oh, not only are we witnessing history, we're part of it. Yeah, we are part of we're it. We're calling right. the shots for this amazing match. Darren Appleton is not missed. He is just a natural stun stroke right yeah. off the rail. A little bit of draw if you want to. There you go. Darren Appleton, 195. He's got a great break shot to at least push. Four balls out. Has the overall tournament record of major for US Open and World Tournament. How's he going to land after this break? Yeah. He's going to land straight in. Someone's going to jelly out. Got to. It's got to. It has to. It has to finish with five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, at least. Oh, at to. least. What? How many times have you seen someone get right close to that finish line and then? Stumble or tie something yeah, up or well, scratch yeah, or some miss people a ball. Say, all right, let's knock out a few. Say, I don't think Appleton's going to do anything like no. that. He's going to stick to his basic. Same shot. He's got to run balls. Rack, cue ball off the rack. Give me some options. He's got to run some balls. You know, just play it like he would normally play it. He can play this high left off the stack, two rails into the center of the table. He does have to be careful, though, because the one is going to come straight down and go straight back up. He could double kiss off the one. Yeah. That hey. is a known scratch. The other thing I've seen players do is you hit this, don't follow it, just stun it off of the one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 14 came down. Did you see that? Jelly, and he made the one. Wow. He's got the 14, 2, and 7. What is it? Come up at the seven or the ten, whichever one you want. Yeah. It's over. Oh my God. Down at Appleton. As Cisco Demonte concedes the match, down at Appleton runs out this the match. Amazing. Keep going. No, oh, keep going. There is officially a 200 ball run. He has broken all kinds of records. What's he doing? He could have kept running. Right? He doesn't want to waste energy. He doesn't want to waste his energy. He's got to play the finals tonight. It's up to Mr. Allen's hand. He will continue to run. It's up to him. It's amazing. Well, he just swung if, at that last shot, or he would have. If, he, if he, he's got a perfect shot here, he like could get right on the 11. He could absolutely keep going. All right, well, he's thinking about maybe trying to keep going. I'd like to see it. Oh, I we'll think everybody would. No, we ain't going nowhere. 
Well, now he's just swinging away, though. He's, he really don't want to, you can tell. He don't want to. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> had a, you're not continuing. We've had enough. Unreal, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have just witnessed history That's on awesome. three different levels. So, uh, man, look, I appreciate you being in the booth with me. I want to thank you. I want to thank the Since I Pool, I want to see Brian. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Darren Appleton, sponsor Predator Cues and the C Systems, which I know is number two. Sponsors, I'm sure he has a couple more, but uh, I'm sure he appreciates all the support you guys do. He's out there doing all the, the work that uh, all these people enjoy watching. I really appreciate what he does for the game. He's a true gentleman. And uh, congratulations, Darren. All right. All right. You guys don't go anywhere. We're going to retool, set up. Uh, the finals are actually coming back, I think, at 5 o'clock. They're going to start the final match. I do believe So Darren's it. got some time to relax, get a meal in him. Uh, same with you guys. Go out there, watch a little, you know, do something. But come back at 5 o'clock. Okay. Again, I want to thank everyone. Inside Pool Magazine, MIC Grind, Dragon Promotions, CNG Gas, Nineway Blades, among many, many others. Darren Appleton just real first to do it. Amazing, Darren. Amazing out. Amazing. Incredible. And uh, uh, you guys stick around. We'll be back later, okay? Eh? Don't go anywhere. We're signing off. Five o'clock. So, See you, then. An hour and 20 minutes. Be back here.